Hello engineers, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to discuss human pose estimation using part affinity fields. Before starting with the video, the quiz question that I asked in the previous video was, what is the difference between regression and classification? The answer to this is, regression is the task of predicting a numerical value. And classification is the task of choosing a correct class or a particular value from a given set of classes or values. And Chirag got that answer right. Now, the quiz question for this video is, what is one interesting application of bipartite matching? Bipartite matching is a computer science problem that will be discussed in this video. However, to find one application of this problem, you would need to search the web for this. All right, so now let us get started with the video. First, let us see how the final software looks like. In the final code, we have two main applications. One is the complete human pose estimation and second is the hand pose estimation. Let us see them one by one. First, let us see the human pose estimation. Now let us see the hand pose estimation. All right, so now let us discuss the technical details of the algorithm used for this pose estimation, part affinity fields. In this technique, the first part is the input image. We are given an input image that contains a number of different human beings. And the complete problem now is to output skeletal poses on these humans present in the input image. The first step that we have is to pass this input image through the first 10 layers of the VGG19 network. VGG19 is an image classification network that is pre-trained and fine-tuned for this particular task. Through this VGG19 network, we get a set of different features. These features are feature maps that we get from this VGG19 network. Then these features are passed through a number of different multi-branching convolution neural networks. After passing through these, let's assume, T stages, we get two outputs which are ST and LT. The multi-branching convolution network actually contains two branches which individually or separately predict S and L. Both these branches contain separate series of convolution maps. The features are passed through this first branch of convolutions and we get an output S1. Then we pass these features through the second branch and get the output L1. Also, we take the original features to this step. At this step, we concatenate all these three features. And then these features are passed on to the subsequent branching convolution networks. In order to train this network, we apply the loss functions again independently for each stage and for each branch. For instance, in stage 1, we apply two separate loss functions which are F1 and F2 for the two branches. Similarly, we do that for the subsequent branches and finally add them up. These loss functions are used to train the network. Now let us discuss what the outputs S and L represent. The human pose estimation problem can be divided into two sub-problems. The first problem is the key point detection, which is we need to detect certain key points of a human being, which can be the head and the chest for the upper body, the shoulder, the elbow and the hand for the arm and additional three key points for our lower body as well. The second problem is to connect these key points in a sequential and correct manner. 
For instance, the head should be connected to the chest, the chest should be connected to the shoulder, the shoulder to the elbow and the elbow to the hand. Both these sub-problems are represented as S and L. S represents the key points and L represents those connections. In mathematical terms, S is represented using confidence maps. Confidence map is a probability distribution on a 2D image. It represents how much confident a computer is on its detection given a 2D location on that image. For instance, in this graph, we can see a bell-shaped curve. We can see that the computer is confident of detecting something at this point over here and its confidence drops as we move away from that location. For instance, if we want to detect a key point at our head, the computer would be pretty confident that the key point is present over here and as we move away from this location, the confidence level of the computer drops. L is represented using what we call part affinity fields. Part affinity fields are 2D vector fields that encode the direction that points from one limb to the other. For instance, in our case, it would mean that we have a vector field that points from the shoulder to the elbow. Now, in order for the network to learn something, we need to define the loss functions. There are two separate loss functions for S and L, which are represented as F1 and F2. Let us first start with F1. F1 is an L2 loss function, which is defined as the sum of the square of the difference between the ground truth and the predicted confident map. The predicted confidence map is represented as ST, which is the final stage prediction and the ground truth is represented as S star. S star is retrieved from the data set itself. The data set is a collection of images that contains the labeled key points. The value of S star is derived from that labeled key point and a Gaussian distribution. The labeled key point location is represented as the peak of this Gaussian. The rest of the Gaussian is modeled around this key point. This Gaussian function is what we use for the ground truth label. Now let us discuss the calculation of F2. F2 is calculated by summing up the squared difference of the ground truth part affinity field and the predicted part affinity field. The predicted field is represented as LT and the ground truth is represented as L star. Now given any two adjacent key points Xi and Xj, we have a vector that joins them. Now around this vector, we define a threshold region, let's say a window that looks something like this. To calculate the ground truth, we consider the location of a point P around these two key points. If a point P lies inside the threshold, then we assign the ground truth value as the horizontal component of that vector P. For instance, this. Otherwise, if the point P lies outside that threshold, then we assign a value of 0 to that ground truth label. In this way, we get the ground truth part affinity field, which we can use to compute the loss function F2. Now we have the key points and we have a way to connect the adjacent key points. Next step is to connect those adjacent key points to further adjacent key points. This connection of adjacent nodes is modeled as a popular problem in computer science we call the bipartite matching. In a bipartite matching, given any graph such as this, we are required to select edges in such a way that no two edges share a node. For instance, if we consider the graph of only the red and the blue nodes and we have these candidate edges, we would be having two solutions to the bipartite matching problem. The first solution would be we retain the edges connecting this red node, this blue node and this red node and this blue node. The other solution would be that we retain the edges connecting this red node, this blue node and this red node and this blue node. Particularly in this case, 
our problem is modeled as an extension to the bipartite matching called the maximum bipartite matching. In maximum bipartite matching, we are required to select edges that do not share a node. In addition to that, we are required to maximize the weights corresponding to those selected edges. In our case, the complete problem can be now modeled as given there are two humans present in the image and their key points are detected like this. And we also consider a green key point which is not represented over here. Then the complete graph problem would be represented something like a graph over here. Now to give the final correct output, we need to connect the nodes that are corresponding to a single human. This means that this red node should be connected to this blue node and this red node should be connected to this blue node. Using the part affinity fields derived earlier, we can easily detect which two adjacent nodes to choose. However, to detect the complete skeleton of a human being, we are required to not only solve this adjacency problem, but also a global problem that involves all the different nodes. Now, bipartite matching is an NP-hard problem, which means as the number of nodes increase, a computer would take a longer and longer amount of time to solve this bipartite matching problem. In order to solve this NP-hard problem in a small amount of time, this technique uses two approximations. The first approximation is that we divide this complete global problem into different sub-problems. This means we can solve the maximum bipartite matching first for the red nodes and the blue nodes. Then we can solve the maximum bipartite matching for the blue nodes and the green nodes. The second approximation that we apply is of a greedy selection. In order to get a global solution for the maximum bipartite matching, we can solve these sub-problems by simply selecting the maximum edge value corresponding to a given node. Given these two corresponding edges of the red node, we can simply select the maximum valued edge. For other subsequent nodes, we can do a similar thing while avoiding the selected edges. Most of the time, these two approximations work really well. The reason for this is, the part affinity fields in themselves encode the information that is required to connect the adjacent nodes. Since we are using a convolution network, the part affinity fields not only encode the adjacent node information, but they also encode the information to connect the nodes globally. Since we pass the complete input image and the convolution network performs operations on that complete image, the part affinity fields by themselves encode the global context information. Due to the global context, we are easily able to apply the sub-problem and the greedy approximations. Once the different nodes are connected, we can finally return as output the human skeleton. Alright, so this is it for the technical discussion of the part affinity fields algorithm. Let us now have a brief look at the code. All the code that we discuss in this video will be present on GitHub. The link to that would be in the description box below. Just like the projects that we did in the previous videos, here as well we have three main files, which are main.py, camera.py and detector.py. These three files together constitute a multi-threaded architecture that we use for running this software. There are two main threads that run this software. One is the camera thread and the other is the main thread. The camera thread is responsible for getting images from our webcam and the detector thread is responsible for predicting the detections or the human pose estimation in those camera images. In the camera.py file, we have the camera thread. We have a subclass of the thread class, the camera thread. We initialize the video capture feature from the OpenCV library. We have a read function that reads the camera image from the webcam. And we have the update function that updates those camera images according to a particular frequency. The run function is the main function of this complete class. It runs the camera thread at a particular frequency so we can capture the webcam images. In the detector.py, we have the pose estimator class. 
this class is responsible for detecting the hand pose as well as the complete body pose we are again using open cv library to do the detections for us in the initialization we have used a particular sub module of the open cv library which is the dnn dnn is responsible for loading the deep neural networks that we have trained for the part affinity fields the authors have already provided a pre trained model which we are loading in our dnn class from this function over here the first parameter is the model file which is the model architecture and the second is the weights file which is the weights of the trained model over here we have defined two class variables which are pose pairs and hand pairs these two variables are responsible for drawing the lines that we were seeing in the detections between those key points for instance the zero key point over here represents the head key point and the one key point over here represents the chest key point similarly the second key point is the shoulder the third key point is the elbow and the fourth key point is the hand similar thing 5 6 and 7 goes for the left arm as well we have created poses of these key point values so that we can draw the lines in the final predictions a similar thing has also been done for the hand as well we have this detect function that takes in the input image that it needs to predict on and passes that to the cnn network here we are calculating the predictions and in this part over here we are iterating over the different confidence maps that we have received from the final prediction out of these confidence maps we are selecting the maximum value key points which we are finally returning finally in the main.py file we have collected the codes from the camera.py and detector.py at this stage we are loading which particular weight we want to use whether we want to use the hand estimator or the full body estimator one key thing to note that the pre trained weights for this model would not be present in the repository that i have provided due to their large size it is not recommended to store them on a github repository however i have provided a readme file which you can go through and click on the links that are given in the readme to download the model weights after selecting the appropriate model and the appropriate weights we are initializing the pose estimator detector finally we have this while true loop that keeps on running indefinitely to do the predictions on the camera images after we get the detections from the detector as a first step we draw the key points that we get from the detections secondly based on whether we chose hand estimation or full body estimation we draw the lines connecting those key points as we can see over here and finally we have the weight key value so we can break the loop by pressing the escape key all right so this is it for the discussion of the code of the part affinity field algorithm so if you like the video press the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos and finally thank you for watching bye